Shalom, everyone in Temple Israel. I don't know about you or how your houses are set up, but over the course of this uh, period of social isolation and living in two houses between here and Louisville, I'm always looking for uh, a new spot in the house to do my work. Even though I have a desk, I'm always experimenting and trying to uh, figure out a better spot. So today the front porch seems to be a good spot to, uh, to speak to you from. So before last Shabbat, when I made this video, we were looking forward to our first three Benot Mitzvah over Zoom. And uh, I think the families, as well as each of us in the congregation, were more than a little bit nervous how this would turn out. Afterwards, after that Shabbat, I was really so excited that even though our synagogue's doors were physically closed, even though people couldn't travel to be with their friends and family physically, our three Benot Mitzvah were able to read Torah, were able to mark their simcha uh, in front of their congregation, in front of their friends and family in what were uh, truly happy events. And it's, pretty, it's miraculous that we're able to do something like this in the middle of this pandemic. And this Shabbat, we are going to celebrate another Bat Mitzvah. We're going to celebrate together with Lila Goldberg and her family. Lila's going to uh, read from the Torah, from one of Temple Israel's Torah scrolls from her house. And uh, I hope you'll join us to wish her a Mazal Tov. It's just as exciting. And then after this Shabbat, we get to the big event, the High Holidays, to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And uh, as you all know, this is going to be a Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur like none of us have ever experienced before. As it gets closer, I hear from more and more people how different it's going to be, how sad they are that we can't be together and have our large services. And, uh, you know, when I hear something like that, I express confidence that if we do all the right things, if we take care of ourselves, if we take care of others this year, we'll be back next year celebrating Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in a way that's more familiar to us. But I also want to talk about how we can make the most out of this coming Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur that start next week. Because, think about it, when you go into shul, into temple for Rosh Hashanah, it doesn't just happen. It takes a lot of preparation. You put yourself into a space where you're ready to pray, where you're ready to celebrate the holidays. And so now, in the few days leading up to Rosh Hashanah, we think about how we can create that same feeling in our own homes. And I wanted to share a few suggestions. First is, on Sunday and on Wednesday, stop by Temple Israel, come to our Shana Tova parade, our Happy New Year parade, and pick up a machzor or two. Pick up the prayer book, the text that we are going to be using. Having a book in your hand makes so much of a difference when we pay attention to the service. It takes our eyes off the screen a little bit. It ties us to the words that we're so familiar with, that we ha now have in our own houses. So remember, Sunday or Wednesday, you can come to Temple Israel and, uh, and pick up your own copy of the Moxor to use at home. Then, before Rosh Hashanah starts, think about the space that you're going to use, the space that's going to be your Mikdash Ma'at, your sanctuary over the course of the holidays. It should be, say, a clean space, a nice-looking space, a quiet space, a space where you can sit with your family and not be distracted by anything else going on in the room. Think about what you want to have in that space, what you actually want to see when you're at services. Are there family artifacts? Are there pieces of Judaica that are important to you? Are there books that, uh, that remind you of happy occasions? Think about what you want surrounding you as you pray. When you walk into the sanctuary, you know the environment that you're walking into. But here in our own homes, we need to create that space. I know in, in my house, all the minions that, um, that I've been leading, I haven't been so good about that yet. I tend to sit at a table at a desk uh, with the kitchen right next door, where I can usually hear my kids running around. Occasionally, they come by to say hello. And it's not so conducive to prayer. So I know it's something that I need to work on uh, for building my own home synagogue. And then the day of Rosh Hashanah. Don't just roll out of bed and go to your computer. When we go to shul to services on the high holidays, we get dressed up and it puts us in a different frame of mind. 
Some people like getting dressed up, some people don't. So this time, you don't have to wear a suit and tie. You don't have to go all the way. But think about your clothing and how it changes the way you approach what you are doing. Do you feel different when you wear polo shirt versus when you wear uh, when you wear a nice suit? And I suggest that you mark Rosh Hashanah not by dressing like it's a day off, but by upping it a little bit. Maybe not the full suit and tie, but dress a little bit nicer than you normally would. And then get yourself ready to participate in services. And finally, during services, don't be a passive spectator. I want you to sing. I want you to pray along with us from your homes. We can't hear you, which some people will be disappointed about. Other people will be more excited about. You can sing and nobody is going to comment on your voice. Whether you're proud of the way you sound or you can't stand it, the only people who can hear you are you and your, uh, and your mishpacha and your family. Take advantage of that. Services will mean so much more if you're not just watching, if you're actually participating like you would at synagogue as well. I think these are just some of the ways that you can start preparing for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur at home. I think each, people, each person will find their own way to make the experience unique. And that's true, just like it is uh, in the sanctuary, that we say the same words, we look at the same book, but for each person, the experience is very different. And your experience, our experiences, will be better the more that we prepare in advance, the more that we put into them. So I hope you'll join us this Shabbat, celebrating uh, Shabbat and celebrating with Lila. We mark the last Shabbat of the year, and then looking forward to seeing you, seeing you online uh, next week as we begin the new year 5781. Have a Shabbat Shalom.